Aho, Bujo in the Noe Makana Duk, Anin, Kagi Gabo and Dijana Kaz, make a knock into them, make a knock watch a wing and do Njaba, Besho Gakaba Kong and Danungong, Apajigo Miigwech, Bizindao Yeg. And what I just said there was a traditional Ojibwe protocol greeting. I said hello, all of my relatives. My name is Kage Gabo, I'm also James Buklich. I'm Turtle Clan, I'm a descendant of Turtle Mountain. I live close to Minneapolis today. Something that came up last night in my talk with, uh, I did a, an online book reading with East West Books on my new book, The Seven Generations and the Seven Grandfather Teachings. And the topic of the drum came up. This particular drum is called the the Buanji Dewe Egan, or the Buani Dewe Egan. It's the Dakota drum. And how this drum came to the Anishinaabe to the Ojibwe, for me, it's an, a very inspiring story. It's beginning, it's very dark, but its resolution is totally inspiring. And I thought I would share that with you this afternoon. So this must have taken place in the early to mid 1860s in the Dakota Territory. Uh, North and South Dakota did not exist yet as states. It was just simply called Dakota Territory. And it said, a Dakota village is attacked by the Chamoco Monarch, by the Long Knives, by the Americans. And the soldiers arrive there to annihilate, to destroy the village. And it said, there's a woman, Wiyaka Shintengli, tail feather woman, who hides for her life in a nearby pond she remains completely submerged underwater. She's using a hollow reed to breathe through because she knows if she's detected, she'll probably most likely be killed. Again, the, the soldiers weren't there to take prisoners. They were there to destroy the village. I mean, it said that she's hiding for her life for three to four days. And while she's hiding, it said she has a vision that walk on Tonka the great spirit, that the great mystery tells her that the spirit is very disappointed in how human beings are living. You have to keep in mind, at this time in our history, the Civil War has ended. There's so much bloodshed during that period. The wars for the Great Plains are raging. And the Dakota aren't just fighting the Americans. They've been in a war with the Ojibwe for maybe 100 winters. It may have even been 200 winters. I don't think anyone knows how long that conflict had been going on, but there had not been peace between both of these nations. And in Tailfeather Woman's vision, she's told that if the Dakota were to present a drum to the Ojibwe, it would bring peace to both of their nations. And so she's able to mystically escape with her life. She brings her vision to the nearest uh, Dakota village where she relates it to the holy men there. And they begin creating the Dewa Igan, the drum that they will present to the Anishinaabe, to the Ojibwe people. And it said when they present this drum, and in many accounts, this is at the original Midewakan, uh, the original Mystic Lake, Mrs. Agagini, uh, Lake Malax. When they present the drum to the Ojibwe and the Ojibwe accept it, they sit together at the drum. And when they sound it, when they play the drum, you can hear what that word for drum in Ojibwe really means. Dewe Igun has in it de, which is the heart. Way, it's the sound voice, characteristic sound. In a gun, it's the instrument, the implement. They're playing the instrument that makes the sound of the heart. And it represents both of their hearts beating as one. When they're singing the songs they have exchanged, they're speaking with one voice. When the smoke is coming up from the Opwagan, from the Chinupa, from the sacred pipe, it represents both of their prayers going up to the heavens. And at that moment, I see a perfect example of what reconciliation can look like. Because these are people who had brought the very worst of what war has to offer to each other, generation after generation. Pain, bereavement, terror, poverty, anxiety, rage, hatred. 
generation after generation after generation. And when the Anishinaabe, when the Ojibwe accepted that drum, he said, no matter what happens, I shall never raise my hand to you again. And I think it's fair to note, and I think this is an important place to note this, these drums are still being played. They will be played this weekend. They are played every fall. There are ceremonies every fall and every spring where this indigenous treaty, where this moment of reconciliation is enforced, it's acknowledged, and it's practiced through ceremony. And for me, you know, the contemplation on what can reconciliation looks like, this is the example that I need in my life. And it gives me hope. It gives me hope as a Anishinaabe, as a human being, that we can look all over the world. And this could be in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, in North and South America, where you have groups who are in continual conflict. And it's not just one place in the world, it is worldwide. And when we move towards with reconciliation and asking ourselves, one, is it possible? I needed that story to tell me that it was possible. It was possible that you have two groups who had such deep seated animosity towards one another, that there was a path towards peace. There was a path towards, for me, I call it menowiji ituin, walking along with one another along the path of life in a good way, as Ouija walking, as companions on the path of life. Not one being more important than the other, walking together as relatives, as partners, as allies. And their example showed me that reconciliation in this case, in their excellent example, which is the example I use whenever this word comes up. For me, this was strength of heart. It's one of our grandfather teaching Zungde Ewen. Zungde E is to be courageous, it's to be brave, but really for me, it is to live with a strong heart. That's what that word literally means. It has an zoom strength and the de e, it's the heart. He or she has a strong heart. And the strength of heart, the bravery, the courage to say, no matter what happens, I will not raise my hand to you ever again. I'll not engage in armed conflict with you ever again. It takes a great deal of courage to be able to do that. Because you do not know what the other, what your relative is going to do. And so in this strength of heart was no longer, I am unafraid to go and fight Dakotas or go and fight whoever you're in conflict with. For me, strength of heart meant that the Ogichida and the Ogichida quake, uh, the warriors, it's really what that word is, the warriors set about in the most difficult endeavor, not in fighting, but in healing, in healing generations. And when I speak of generations here, I like the perspective. I just had this realization this summer. I was in Montana. I was at the oldest building in Montana uh, that was built by one of my great 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 grandfathers. And it made me realize that my son, from that grandfather who built that building to my son, that had been a period of seven generations. That means there are people, people my age who have children, that someone seven generations ago made this peace, made reconciliation with one another. And in that we have seen seven generations of peace between both of these nations. I've worked side by side with Dakota people, with people who have worked for their language, for their culture, for their history, for their spirituality. And working side by side with Dakotas, we have not had that conflict. And that was because 
of the agreement our ancestors had made. And it struck me that if we really want reconciliation in this context, how do we do it? How do we approach it? We know we can't make someone else change, but we can change ourselves. And if we choose to change ourselves and we know how with a good life, a life of peace, a life of balance, a life without conflict with our relatives or our ecosystem, a holistic life, a life where our words are in alignment with our actions, then we know if we show up seeking Minopamatsuan, the good life. And we let the Gichi Dabakunagewan on the great law, the sacred law, the seven grandfather teachings, knowing that if we show up for our relatives with Sakyutuan, that love with Deboiwan, where we're speaking the truth, we're speaking from our hearts, the very center and core of our being, with Guaikwadizuan where our words are in alignment with our actions, where we're acting honestly, righteously, virtuously, acting with humility, where we're saying one side is not more important than the other. We're relatives. With Manaji Itduan, with respect, we're acknowledging the sanctity, the sacredness of our relatives' lives. We're truly respecting them. Again, with that Zungida Ewan, that strength of heart, that bravery, that courage that you need for an endeavor like this, You'll act with true Nibwak Kawan. You'll act with wisdom. You'll act with intelligence. You will act in a way that will be positively beneficial for someone seven generations from now. And we've seen in our ancestors' choices and their decisions how that can work. So in a day and age where it's so easy to be cynical about reconciliation, it's easy to be dismissive of it. I see in that example of the exchange of the drum, how it can really take place, how we can move forward, and uh, how we can truly seek out a good life, a minopamatsuan, a life worth living. So, mi ye wa kido yan nongo, apijigo mi guich bizendaoyeg. Thank you all so much for listening. I'm so grateful to be here. Dagasai Guamasik. Please, all of you, do take care. And Banama Mino Sabandam and Gigo Bandaman. And the spirit shall decide when we see each other again. Miigwech.